<laughs> welcome, welcome to Helix Water Chats. We started our Water Chat series in 2019 as a way to share information and current issues with our customers and to provide a new space for customers to get answers to their questions. Tonight, we are excited to introduce you to East County Advanced Water Purification, which will provide 30% of the drinking water supply for East County by 2025, just a few years away. I'm Mike Erhammer with the Public Affairs team here at Helix. Also here tonight are Carlos Lugo, Helix General Manager, Brian Olney, our Assistant General Manager and Director of Water Quality and System Operations, and Brian will be our presenter this evening. Our Director of Administrative Services, Jennifer Bryan. Our, uh, let's see, let's see, our Director of Operations, Kevin Miller. And also Michelle Curtis and Vince Dambrose, my colleagues here in public affairs. Next slide. Let me get that up, Mike. Sorry about that. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Here we go. Who's got the slides? <laughs> okay. Next slide. So we'd like to start by sharing a little bit about Helix and what we do. And then we'll take a deep dive into East County Advanced Water Purification. What the project is, why we're involved, how it's being governed, how it's being funded, and how we are getting information about the project out to our customers. After the presentation, we'll have a Q&A and we will answer all of your questions. Next slide. So a couple of housekeeping items before we start. Please check your Zoom controls, which are on your screen, usually at the bottom of your Zoom window. Uh, please make sure your audio is muted during the presentation. We only want to hear uh, Brian's dog barking during the presentation. <laughs> please click on the chat button to type a question uh, when, uh, during the presentation. And when we get to the Q&A, those are the questions we will look for and answer first. Chat button is there in your control bar. And during the Q&A, if you have a follow-up question or an additional question, you can click on the reactions button in the control bar and raise your hand, or you can just speak up and tell us that you've got a question. And I think that'll probably be just fine tonight. So with that, I will turn it over to Helix Assistant General Manager, Brian Olney. Thank you, Mike. Pleasure to be here tonight um, to go over some information uh, regarding really a, a large project, but also a pretty exciting project, I think for Helix itself, as well as uh, East County as a region. So like Mike said, we're going to do a little bit of background just about Helix Water District itself, um, just to kind of give some understanding um, have, of how Helix currently operates. So Helix provides water service um, to a service area that includes a population of just under 300,000 people. Um, and that is really to the city of El Cajon, city of La Mesa, the city of Lemon Grove, and then unincorporated portions of San Diego County that include areas outside La Mesa, um, Spring Valley, Lakeside, those areas. Um, Helix is considered a kind of a large water agency, um, and we do have treatment facilities uh, in Lakeside that we use to treat water for our, our service area as well as others. Um, and through agreements with the San Diego County Water Authority, um, we also wholesale that treated water to our sistering agencies in the county. That includes Padre Dam Municipal Water District, Otay Water District, and Lakeside Water District. So um, in whole, when you look at the, the area that see, or the population that Helix is servicing through our treatment facilities, um, you know, we're approaching half a million people, which is um, a large portion of, of East County and greater San Diego. Um, Helix itself um, is governed by an elected five board panel. Um, each of those board members represent a division in the district, um, and those are the representatives um, for the ratepayers. Um, and then currently Helix operates um, this large complex water system uh, with roughly 150 employees. So it does take a lot of infrastructure um, to move water around um, and deliver it to customer homes and businesses. Um, just a quick overview of some of that infrastructure. Uh, Helix does own and operate two dams and reservoirs, uh, one being Lake Cuyamaca located up near Julian. We use that kind of a backcountry reservoir uh, we've owned that since the late 1800s, um, and that does help us capture local water through rights that we have with the city of San Diego, um, and then transfer that water to our treatment facility in Lakeside. We also own Lake Jennings, which is located in Lakeside right across from our treatment facility. Um, as an example, last year at that treat at our RM Levy water treatment facility, uh, we treated just under 16 billion gallons of water. So um, it is a facility that works hard to serve the community as a whole. 
Um, and then just to point out, I won't go through all of the, the points on here, but um, Helix has been in business for well over 100 years. Um, our treatment facility has been constructed and in an operation since the mid 60s. Um, and Helix takes our, our mission and our goal and our service to our public very seriously. Um, we've been 100% compliant since the day we've come online in the mid 60s with that. Um, and that's not by chance. That's, that's due to hard work that's done through uh, good governance, good employees, uh, good elected officials that understand the important role that we play in the community that we serve. <laughs> There's some other facts on here about the size of the system. Uh, 25 pump stations and tanks that moves the water around through that service area map. Um, 740 miles of pipe, and this is all delivered through about 56,000 water meters. So let's get into a little bit about the project. So why are we talking about an advanced water purification program itself? What, is it, what does it mean and why would we want to look into this? So the, the map that we're looking at on the screen right now really shows the service areas of Padre Dam, the County of San Diego and El Cajon. And these are the, the three wastewater agencies that are serving um, our service area and the surrounding service area here in East County. Collectively uh, today, how this works is they, they have wastewater collection systems um, and they all kind of collect it. Wastewater is typically on a gravity type system. So hydraulically they collect it through their systems. It funnels into larger and larger pipes uh, and it meets uh, comes to a head in kind of the Mission Gorge corridor, uh, go heading out towards San Diego. Um, and it basically collects into one large feeder that's owned by the city of San Diego. And we send that wastewater to the city of San Diego to be treated out at their Point Loma wastewater facility. <clears throat> um, as we'll get into more detail in the presentation, um, that's really the crux of why we're looking at this. The many participants today may be aware of some of the issues uh, with the city of San Diego's Point Loma uh, wastewater facility, um, but it's it has to be permitted by the uh, EPA in order to discharge, treat and discharge that water to the ocean. Um, it's currently running, running under um, a special permit. And that's because it doesn't meet the EPA's treatment requirements. So the city of San Diego has been looking for years at what do they need to do to comply um, with the EPA permitting um, and not have to run under a waiver uh, in order to operate. Um, and there's a cost associated with that. Um, there's potential large dollar upgrades associated with that. Uh, and so the city is moving down a path as well, looking at a pure water project, um, but they may still also have to do improvements to Point Loma. So that comes at a, at a cost, a price tag to um, our customers, the customers of El Cajon. Even though we don't do wastewater, we have shared customers with the city who does wastewater. Um, and so anything that we can participate in that's a benefit um, to those customers is something that we, we have looked at to evaluate. On kind of the other side of that coin comes in the water side of the equation. And um, those, of the, those of you living in San Diego for some time is probably no mystery. Um, you understand uh, the issue of being at the end of a very long pipeline. Um, we import our water from two primary sources, that being the, the Sacramento Bay Delta uh, in kind of central Northern California. Uh, this is also referred to as state project water, uh, as well as our bread and butter, which is the Colorado River water, which we have been importing water into California since the mid 40s associated with the Colorado River. The issue associated with that imported supply is it's overused, it's oversubscribed. Um, the Colorado in specifically, um, you know, there's numbers that range from a million up to as high as $3 million of, of over allocations to the, to the states that are using that water. And the Colorado River Basin has been in a sustained long-term drought conditions um, along with that over allocation. And in fact, this year is the first time ever um, that all of the states that pull off Nevada and Arizona um, have been mandated to cut back. So they, they've reached a level in Lake Mead where we pull this water from that um, once it reaches that level, we have to stop drafting out of that. And Arizona and Nevada take the first reductions on that. So these are, um, these are sensitive systems. Um, they're not fully replenished and, and we need to do work to look at how we can, can get rid of that reliance. On the Sacramento Delta or the state project water line, you know, similar issues um, exist. That system really is supported by snowpack uh, in the Sierra mountains. And when we don't get that snowpack, there's no water to deliver. And we're seeing that now uh, in currently in the news and the headlines, we're talking about a drought in California, a mega drought. Um, and this impacts the whole state. It uh, impacts the Central Valley where we have lots of agriculture. Um, and there's constant competition with this water between agricultural users, environmental users, and of course, municipal users as well. So 
Um, the pie graph on the right hand side of the screen uh, really looks at a historical picture of how Helix uh, gets its water and roughly about 86% of our supply comes from one of these two sources. Um, and because we do have local supplies through the Lake Jennings and Lake Quimaca, as I mentioned earlier, um, historically about 14% of that local water. So again, you can see even when we have local water, it's not enough to meet our, our, all of our demands. Um, it's helpful, um, but we are reliant on that imported supply. All right, so we'll jump in and start looking at a little bit about what is the East Canyon Advanced Water Purification Project. So um, as I mentioned, it's a large project. So it's, it's not a project that one agency itself is gonna tackle. So there's partnerships that have been developed um, between Helix, Padre Dam, uh, the County of San Diego and their, and their wastewater systems and the city of El Cajon. And through this partnership, um, I'll go in through more detail about how this will work, um, but collectively we've been working together to develop this project as a whole uh, to benefit all of the service areas of each of the four agencies. <clears throat> So looking at the benefits, why would we want to why would we want to look at a project like this? Um, as I mentioned earlier about you know how we currently manage the wastewater, that's a lot of work that we do to bring that water in from out of state. We're pumping it hundreds of miles. There's costs associated with that. We use it once and then we discharge it to the ocean. Not a very efficient process. Um, it's costly. It's not efficient, um, and it's not a great use of limited resources. So this project eliminates that discharge from East County. Um, effectively, we're able to now take that water and then reuse it. It creates a new local um, drought proof supply. It's sustainable um, because of the, the technology that we're able to use. And it reduces the region's dependence on, on imported water, which is, is a good thing, right? So we may live in a certain service area in, in Helix's service area or Padre Dam service area, but collectively as a region, we all work together. So when there's impacts to that imported supply, that impacts the agricultural users in the North County, right? That, in, that The biotech industries need that water, the city of San Diego industrial area. So, so everything collectively in the region, all of us are working together to do that. And this project um, is, is a, one part of many aspects of projects throughout the county um, that we do to reduce that, that independent or that dependence on that, that imported supply. It also provides up to about 30%. And we'll get into about, look at what types of volumes of water this project will produce. Um, but when looking at what Helix and Padre's annual demands are currently, um, this project has the potential to produce up to about 30% of those demands. So before we jump into uh, details of this, we've got a very nice video that we'd like to show. It's about four minutes long. Um, it will go through some of the items that we'll go through, but it's, a, it's very nicely put together. Um, and we'll start off with that. That'll put uh, some thinking caps on, probably generate some questions that we'll jump into when we get into the details. Um, and uh, this was developed by the, the Joint Powers Authority, uh, which we'll get into in more detail about their role in the project and how that's going forward. So I'll start the, um, the video and Michelle, let me know if anything's wrong or you can't hear it. Water is essential to our everyday life. We must ensure a strong water future and plan wisely preserve the environment and recycle and reuse this most precious resource. Recycling and reusing the water we already have is vital. Most of our drinking water travels hundreds of miles to get to us. We need a local sustainable water supply to secure a reliable water future that will guard against drought, protect the environment, enable us to have a locally controlled source of water and economize costs. The East County Advanced Water Purification Program provides a strong water future for communities in East San Diego County. Using state-of-the-art technology to purify recycled water, it will create clean, safe, high-quality drinking water. The program is a collaborative effort with Padre Dam Municipal Water District County of San Diego, City of El Cajon, and Helix Water District. Here's how it works. After water goes down the drain, it will be treated at a water recycling facility. Then, the recycled water will go to the Advanced Water Purification Facility. Here, the purification process begins with membrane filtration. With filters resembling straws, water is forced through microscopic holes 
This process filters out particles 300 times smaller than a human hair. Next, water is pushed through reverse osmosis membranes that remove particles 100,000 times smaller than a human hair. Pharmaceuticals, chemicals, and pathogens are removed, resulting in water that is near distilled quality. Then, the advanced oxidation process uses chlorine with ultraviolet light to break down remaining organic molecules. Similar technology is often used to sterilize surgical instruments. The water is now so pure, minerals are added back in for taste and to ensure a proper and healthy pH level in the water. The next step is free chlorine disinfection. Here, chlorine is mixed with the purified water to ensure the water meets high state and federal drinking water standards. The purified water will then be delivered to Lake Jennings, a reservoir in East County. To protect fish and plant life in the reservoir, the water is first dechlorinated and then combined with local and imported water. Finally, it's treated once more at the Levy Water Treatment Plant before being delivered to customers as safe, clean drinking water. This program will provide East County with about 30% of its drinking water. It's a smart investment that will provide water at a competitive cost compared to imported water and help control wastewater treatment costs. East San Diego County will join communities around the world already creating purified drinking water using similar technologies in London, Belgium, Singapore, and California. In fact, Orange County is home to the largest advanced purified water facility in the world. For more than a decade, this facility has delivered advanced purified water to homes and businesses, including some popular amusement parks. The Advanced Water Purification Program will ensure a safe, reliable, drought-proof, locally controlled, and environmentally sound water supply. East County Advanced Water Purification, for a strong water future, it is the clear solution. All right, great video on that. Um, and it did go into some detail that we'll follow up on now through some of these, these slides. So, <clears throat> so as we talked a little bit about um, the existing wastewater system and how it, how it works, what's what we're looking at right now on this slide. So about 15 million gallons per day of wastewater is produced um, through the three member agencies uh, each day. Um, and that breaks down about 4 million from Padre Dam service area, about 4 million from the, the county of San Diego and about seven from the city of El Cajon. Currently, as that, that, that collection system comes down to that main feeder in that Mission Gorge corridor, Padre Dam pulls off about 2 million gallons of that and they send it up to uh, their existing water reclamation facility. Um, and that supplies flow to support their, their Santee Lakes recreation area, as well as uh, what we call a Title 22 or purple pipe system. So they have some irrigation demands in the city of Santee that they're able to reuse some of that water. But at the end of the day, that 13 million gallons is, is still sent off to Point Loma and, and then sent out, to the, sent out to the ocean. So from this project's perspective, what we're looking to do is um, where that red X is, is quit sending that water out and wasting it. We'll, we'll repurpose the water, we'll divert that flow um, up to a brand new uh, water reclamation facility co-located at the, at the Padre Dam site up in Santee Lakes, as well as a brand new advanced water purification treatment plant. Uh, it does require we build a pipeline, about 11 million or 11 mile pipeline uh, from Santee Lakes over to Lake Jennings um, to get it there. But once, once the water's in Lake Jennings, the rest of the infrastructure exists. The lake already exists. The distribution system exists, the Levy treatment plan already exists. So it's a, an efficient use of infrastructure that already moves water uh, through the region. So kind of a high level overview of kind of how this, this process works. So, you know, Padre Dam has been in, around in the recycling business for over 60 years. So um, El Cajon, the county and Padre Dam, they have great experience in their existing wastewater collection system. Um, as part of this project, they'll, they'll make more robust um, efforts in looking at source water control uh, in terms of that wastewater collection. In fact, they've done lots of studies already on that. Um, once they collect it, they'll send it to this new water recycling facility um, co-located where they already do water recycling. Um, and that will treat that water for both the Santee Lakes purposes, the, that purple pipe system, as well as preparing it now uh, to go into the East County Advanced Purification Facility. 
Um, and we'll get into details on that treatment process, but effectively um, they make extremely purified water through that, that treatment plant. Uh, and then it gets pumped over to Lake Jennings. And so that's kind of the separation between where the wastewater ends and the water begins. So, so the, those, those joint power agencies, those partners, Padre Dam, the County of San Diego and El Cajon, um, they'll work kind of on those first three steps. Once they deliver it to Lake Jennings, Helix will take over management of the water in Lake Jennings, uh, making sure we're complying with the regulatory aspects of that. There are their dilution, we'll be looking at um, me meeting the dilution requirements in the reservoir, as well as the retention. The water will stay in Lake Jennings um, for you know no less than four months, um, but is and but much greater than six months at certain times, um, and we'll make sure we're managing that as well. Uh, and then we'll pull that water out of Lake Jennings, send it through our existing treatment facility as we blend it with other imported water. Again, this won't make all of our water, but it will take some of it. So we'll still be blending it with that imported supply. And then we'll deliver it back out to our customers, to Padres customers, um, in fact, to Lakeside's customers and to Otay Water Dist District's customers. Um, we're not able to separate the water molecules of where we're delivering. Once it's delivered into the treatment plant and treated, um, it goes out into that delivery system. Um, and everyone will, will, will receive the benefit of this water. So talk a little bit about that treatment process. So we, we saw in the video where they talked about the, the four main steps of, of how they're gonna treat this. The first being that of membrane filtration. And remember, um, by the time the water gets to the advanced treatment processes, it's already gone through a, a water reclamation facility. So it's already been treated um, for nutrient removal, solids removal, it's, there's some disinfection that's taken place, um, and it's already been filtered once. It's been filtered through um, anthracite sand filters, um, and it is at that point usable as irrigation water and water for Santee Lakes. So now we're moving it into this advanced process. So this membrane filtration process, again, very, very small pores in the filters, uh, the filter membranes, um, so it's, it's physically removing things from the water. It goes next to reverse osmosis. Many of us are familiar with reverse osmosis. Um, it's a very effective uh, treatment process. Uh, and again, it has even smaller uh, pores and ability for, for things to move through these membranes. Um, it is a pressurized membrane in order to get the things to, you know, water molecules to move through uh, and reject those smaller things. It does require a little more energy and, and pressure to get through there. Um, so those are physically restraining processes. So you're, you're straining things and removing things from the water. The next step goes through a process called ultraviolet advanced oxidation or UV oxidation. Um, and the oxidation process comes from the addition of chlorine during this process. So UV um, is UV light. So it goes through a very, um, a very bright, high energy light um, at, at an ultraviolet light spectrum um, that damages uh, biological uh, processes, if anything, that may have made it through the first two membrane processes. Um, and then the UV light, in addition with the chlorine, also makes a strong oxidant to, um, to change any potential chemical contaminants that may have made it through that process as well. So it's highly effective. Uh, and then once the water goes through there into the pipeline, um, we will use free chlorine um, through that pipeline until it gets to Lake Jennings where it gets disinfected. But again, chlorine has been around in years. Um, advancements in water safety were started with the use of chlorine in the early 1900s, um, and it is uh, highly effective um, at making drinking water safe. Um, just a, a point of note here is that the reverse osmosis and the UV advanced oxidation, these are the two minimum required treatment processes in the state's regulations associated with any type of reuse project. So any project looking at any type of reuse must use reverse osmosis or UV advanced oxidation. Um, or go through a qualifying process with other treatment uh, processes to, to demonstrate equivalency. As we saw in the video, uh, this is a proven technology. Um, it's been around. Um, it's just that, you know, there are things that have to come in place in order before it becomes viable. Um, you know, 30 years ago, it just wasn't viable. We had imported supply and there weren't, wasn't the issues on that imported supply. There are today. Um, existing projects, Australia is a big, it's a big user um, of reuse. Uh, in the uh, European area, you got Belgium, we've got London that's working on a project itself, the Asian Peninsula. Uh, as they did mention, Orange County, that is the largest one in the world. Um, a little bit different between their project, they, they treat the water and they inject it back into groundwater basins and then it's pulled out of the groundwater to be reused. Um, as you saw in the video, we're going through um, a surface water reservoir. Um, still considered reuse, uh, the difference being ours is called surface water augmentation, theirs is called groundwater augmentation. 
So, you know, Helix and Padre Dam and El Cajon and the County of San Diego, we're not moving forward on this project in a vacuum. There's, you know, there is a, a lot of work that needs to be done. There's a lot of oversight um, that we have to work through to develop this project. Um, as an example, um, we have to get permits uh, from the State Water Resource Control Board, which oversees the Division of Drinking Water. Um, there's permits from the EPA to discharge the water. We also had to develop pretty complex computer models that can evaluate Lake Jennings, and they're called hydrodynamic models. And, and we, can, you know, we can make computer models and do that, but how do we validate? How do we make sure that those models are accurate? So we've really had some great work with Scripps Institute of Oceanography, where they have assisted in developing our hydrodynamic model. And effectively what they did is we developed the model, we were gathering data out of there about how does the water mix in the reservoir? How does the dilution works in the ready? How does the lake look and work once we inject this water into the reservoir? Um, and then we performed a tracer study. So we actually went out, we put a dye in the reservoir um, and then Scripps Institute of Oceanography worked with us to use an unmanned um, underwater vehicle where they went through um, and they basically traced where this tracer moved through the water when we injected it. Um, and then we were able to compare their data to the model that we had and determine that the model is accurate. Um, the data that the Scripps Institute of Oceanography collected basically showed that our model accurately represents how the water moves through the reservoir. Um, that was an exciting partnership um, and we're continuing to look at exist other uh, partnerships that we can use with Scripps uh, Institute on, on other aspects. There's also many other things that we've had to do. There's, um, you know, there are plans that have to be developed and approved by the regulating authority, which is the Division of Drinking Water. Um, one interesting aspect um, on any type of reuse project is that in the state's regulations, we're required to uh, develop and implement an independent advisory or expert panel. Um, and that panel has to be an independent panel. We have to go through a third party to, to gather and choose who these, these experts are. And they're, they can, they're from all over the, you know, the spectrum of expertise. Some are in the health agency, some are medical, some are in the environmental, some are tr water treatment engineers, some are uh, lake experts and how things work. So um, we have done that. We have an independent advisory panel. We've met with them six times at this point. Um, at this point, they have approved um, and provided um, input on all aspects of the project to date. Um, and we will have many more meetings with them as we continue to move forward uh, with the project. Um, ultimately, the Division of Drinking Water will approve the final permits um, and what the requirements are for us to operate. But that independent advisory panel is very important um, as a third party expert uh, to review how we're moving forward. Um, along the way, we've also, um, you know, we've had demonstration facilities um, at Santee Lakes as part of, part of this, using that same treatment train that we just went through um, and we ran that for several years, um, producing about 100,000 gallons per day of treated water, where we collected tons of sampling and monitoring laboratory results, um, basically demonstrating to the independent advisory panel, as well as the Division of Drinking Water, that uh, the process that we're putting in place will meet and exceed their minimum regulatory requirements, um, and that the uh, agencies together through their partnership um, have the capacity to operate a project of this magnitude. So how does the governance and, and operations of this project uh, work? Um, so this next slide, what we're looking at um, is kind of an overview of the structure of, of how the program as a whole will be put together. So if we, if we focus into the center of this and kind of the blue square, uh, we have the East County Advanced Water Purification Joint Powers Authority. Um, and as we mentioned, as we started the, you know, the, the idea of look at this project is, is what are we doing with this, our wastewater and, and what issues are so um, it's, a it's a large project, so none of the agencies were excited about moving forward on their own. Um, that's a little intimidating, um, and it's better to be working together uh, with experts um, and surrounding agencies uh, that are doing the same thing and have the same challenges. Um, so effectively, it was decided to, to develop a new agency, a new authority. And so a joint powers authority was developed, uh, consisting of Padre Dam, the County of San Diego, and El Cajon. Um, and you know, not by mistake, those are the wastewater agencies. Uh, Helix participates uh, in the JPA, and we'll discuss this on, a, on another slide, um, but just not as a full voting member. But So now we have this Joint Powers Authority that's formed. They're going to be in charge of developing and constructing and managing the, the, the project as a whole. Um, and so those are the green boxes that are on this screen. So, so the JPA is responsible for getting financing, uh, putting that together. They're developed, uh, responsible for developing the designs, uh, the construction, uh, all the contracts associated with that. 
being the lead project manager and making sure that the, the things being developed and, and constructed is the way it should, any legal engineering aspects of it, that's all being done and handled by the, the Joint Powers Authority. So who is the Joint Powers Authority? Again, it's the three agencies working collectively together, but who actually runs the day-to-day -day 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 operations? Under this model, uh, the JPA actually is not having any direct employees. They're contracting that, that responsibility out. And currently Padre Dam has been assigned those contracts um, and Padre Dam will work as the operations and maintenance manager, as well as the project administrator for the project. So along with that is how does the project gonna fund itself? How, how do we secure revenues to support the operation of this project? So on the right side of the screen, you see the orange boxes. And so these are the wastewater agencies. They have, they have wastewater that they need to um, get rid of. They need to send it somewhere to be treated. And that's what the, this project will do. And so the JPA has contracts or agreements with each of these agencies to collect their wastewater um, and then treat it uh, and then and get rid of it, just like the city of San Diego does currently. Not, um, this, so this will be more efficient for them and it will be competitive in cost uh, with what they're currently doing. Um, the difference here is that once that wastewater is treated, uh, we now have a highly purified water that can be reused, doesn't have to be discharged and, and wasted into the ocean. So Padre Dam and Helix on the left-hand side of the screen we also have purchase agreements with the JPA where we'll purchase this water um, and then reuse it through Lake Jennings and then distribute it back through um, our distribution systems. So the, the, the JPA or the Joint Powers Authority, again, consisted up of the four agencies, um, Padre Dam, the County of San Diego and the El Cajon. Um, they are the primary uh, JPA members and the, and the board of directors. Each agency gets to appoint uh, someone from their um, uh, their organization to sit on the board. And then of course, you know, Helix is a critical player in this and we need to have a seat at the table to make sure that all agencies are working together. Um, so we do as well have a seat um, at the board, just not in an a official voting capacity. Uh, these are the current members currently. So um, August Karras from Padre Dam, uh, Joel Anderson from the County of San Diego, Steve Goble from the city of El Cajon. And from Helix, uh, our board member, Joel Scalzitti is representative uh, and Kathleen Hedberg, um, our board president, is the alternate. So how much water is this, is this project producing? So we're producing um, about 11 and a half million gallons per day on an annual average um, with a maximum production of about 14,000 acre feet on an annual basis. Um, and that equates to about 12 and a half million gallons per day. Um, in general, under the agreements that we have, Helix and Padre will share that water. We'll, we'll make purchases of about 69% of whatever's produced will, will go to Helix and about 31% will go to Padre. Um, and those volumes respectively uh, reach about uh, or match about 30% of each of our agency's overall annual demands. Associated with this um, is the cost of the water. And so, so what's the impact um, for Helix on this? So as part of the negotiation of these agreements, um, you know, we import about 86% of our water already. So we felt it made sense that if we're importing water um, and we're paying a price for that water, then we should index the price that we're going to pay for this water against that, those same rates. So that's exactly what we did. So the, the price that Helix will pay uh, for the, to the JPA for this water is indexed against that of the San Diego County Water Authority. So effectively, it matches the same cost as we, that we already pay for that imported supply. There's, there's one difference, and that is for a certain volume of the water that we purchase, we will purchase that at a discounted rate. It'll be a 9% less. Um, and as we get a few more slides down, that is to uh, make sure that our ratepayers are being compensated for the investments that Helix has to make in, in our infrastructure uh, to make this project come online. <clears throat> So looking at an overall program schedule, um, the red dash line in the middle of the screen, it reflects where we're at right now. It's about almost to the, we're in March, almost through the first quarter of calendar year 2022. Uh, to the left of that dash line, you can see that um, a lot has been done to date already. The, those water and wastewater agreements for the JPA, those have, those have been established, they're in place. Um, that Joint Powers Authority was formed in 2019. So, so they're a legal entity and they are doing the job that they need to do right now, moving this project forward. Um, we've been working with the regulating agencies to develop our permitting process for several years already, and, and there's more to do. We will continue to work with them on that. Uh, financing, big, big issue on this. How do we pay for this? So there's been a lot of work on financing, um, and we have a slide to go through of just the excellent job the JPA and, the, and, and Padre Dam has done in securing some really great financing options for the project. And then on the bottom of the screen, 
um, we're really looking at the kind of the nuts and bolts of constructing and designing the project. And so um, they've already gone out, they've, procure, they've done procurement and they've, they've selected uh, construction agencies and, and designers, uh, consultants to design the project. Uh, they, they're moving on this project in kind of a, a design build format. So the construction companies are working in, co in collaboration with a consultant that kind of they're designing it and then, the, then they'll build it all as they move forward. Um, this provides some efficiencies in the process. Um, it also meets some of the timeline we need for some of the financing that we've secured. Um, effectively, they're about 60% design right now. And, and you'll see this little diamond towards the bottom called the final GMP. That stands for guaranteed maximum price. So under this um, project implementation um, process, Padre Dam and the JPA are working with um, the design consultants and the, the contractors to basically develop um, a project price and what the guaranteed price will be moving forward. Provide some stability and understanding of, of how the project can move forward and do we have enough funding for the project. Uh, we expect sometime in late May to get those numbers um, and then the final decision will be made to move forward uh, and advance the project to 100% design uh, and begin construction. It is sort of a, somewhat of a tight construction window, um, but doable at this point, manageable. Um, and we ultimately expect that in the calendar year 2025, uh, the project will be coming online. Um, we'll do some startup testing, commissioning, you know, making sure that uh, the Division of Drinking Water and the permitting agencies are comfortable with what's how it's running um, with the ultimate target in late 2025, early 2026 to have the project online and, and producing full scale. Talking about the development of the project. So it is a pretty large project. There are a lot of facilities that have to be constructed. So uh, the JPA has moved forward with breaking the project into four primary packages. The first package as seen on the screen uh, really is the largest uh, and it is looking at the, the new water reclamation facility and the new advanced water purification facility. This will include options for solid handling, potential energy recovery, um, as well as potentially waste collection. Um, this also is where the existing Ray Stoyer water reclamation facility, that the existing plant will stay online during construction when this comes online. And then once the new project's online, uh, the existing water reclamation facility will be uh, decommissioned. Uh, package two, really uh, most closely associated with Helix and the issue that Helix will be dealing with in terms of the project. Um, and this is that 11 mile pipeline that will take that advanced treated water from Santee Lakes uh, through Santee, uh, Lakeside, and into basically El Monte Road out of the El Monte Valley where Helix has property below Lake Jennings. Um, we'll co-locate a dechlorination facility um, and then um, bring that water up to the backside of Lake Jennings um, where it will be uh, delivered to the, to the lake. Um, a couple of the other pictures that we see on here, these are just some renderings. Um, I think the project partners uh, and the Helix board uh, wanted to ensure that um, you know users of the Lake Jennings Recreation Facility um, had the ability to understand um, you know the region as a whole in terms of water and how water is being delivered and how Lake Jennings fits into that. Um, so these are some um, some initial views of renderings of of what might what those uh, facilities may look like, and they're basically kind of an overlook advantage. There'll be informational systems, uh, the ability for visitors to take a look and understand how the project as a whole. Uh, is put together and works. Um, package three, um, as we saw earlier on those slides uh, over in that Mission Gorge kind of area in Santee, um, if anyone's ever uh, driven on the Highway 52 West or Mission Gorge, right where Mission Gorge goes under Highway 52, right to the north or to the right side of the freeway there, you'll see this facility here. That this is an existing facility owned by the city of San Diego. It's a, it's a wet weather flow pump station. So the JPA will be purchasing, the, purchasing this and repurposing it. Um, as we mentioned, there's about 13 million gallon that's bypassing this and going straight to the city of San Diego. We have to get that, that wastewater up to these new facilities. So this pump station will be repurposed along with some new pipeline infrastructure uh, to bring this 13 million gallons per day up to, uh, or up, I'm sorry, this 15 million gallons per day up to the new water reclamation and advanced purification facility. Um, and then finally, package four, um, this is a pretty interesting approach. So um, not only is this a, a collaboration of the, the Joint Powers Authority, but it's the Joint Powers Authority in collaboration with the city of San Diego. So the fact that we're using membranes as part of the treatment process, 
um, that will produce a residuals waste that, um, that needs to go back uh, to the sewer, uh, which effectively means it would be going back to the city of San Diego. Um, as mentioned earlier, the city of San Diego is also working to advance uh, the city's pier water program. Uh, and they'll have residuals as well, as well as they have industrial users upstream of, of their takeoffs to go to their pier water program. So the JPA and the city of San Diego are collaborating on reuse of an existing force main that came from that pump station on the previous slide. Uh, and down here in the right-hand corner, there's an existing 48 inch line that runs through kind of Mission Trails Park and kind of along this Mission Gorge corridor um, that usually carries a pumped flow during wet weather uh, seasons. Um, they're going to reuse this line uh, and add a 24 inch um, and a, and a uh, 10 inch uh, HDP pipe in, inside that pipe that will reduce impacts to working within Mission Trails Park. Um, and it will provide the ability to maintain the ability to run um, that wet weather flow, as well as that residuals return um, back to the sewer system and then provide the city um, the ability to offset that and send it to Point Loma with bypassing their, their North City Reclamation Facility. So all in all, really great engineering um, and kind of a robust approach to really ensure the safety and continued operation of, of, both, um, part, of both projects. Uh, as mentioned, Helix does have some facilities to upgrade as well. So on the lower left-hand portion or screen, you'll see a picture. That's the existing Chet Herrett pump station. Uh, Helix had already identified this pump station in our long-term capital master plan for replacement. Um, as part of the advanced water purification program, uh, the pump station will operate differently than it would as, as just a raw water pump station for the district. So uh, we will be um, developing that, that pump station uh, in the next few years. Uh, the next picture to the right uh, is an initial picture of our inlet outlet tower at Lake Jennings during the initial construction in the mid-60s. Um, once the project goes online, it becomes more difficult to drain the lake to levels where we might need to do repairs or inspections on, on these types of facilities. It also disrupts the ability for the JPA to operate their wastewater facilities. So uh, we'll be working through a condition assessment, making any upgrades or repairs that we may need prior to the on, online of the, uh, of the project. Um, we'll be looking at some stormwater control uh, evaluation in the back of Lake Jennings. Another interesting aspect, and we talked about how Lake Jennings fits into this program. It acts as a, as a dilution vessel, uh, an environmental barrier, as well as um, a retention vessel. Um, and in order to achieve that through that modeling that we've done with Scripps Institute of Oceanography and this hydrodynamic model, um, we'll be adding additional air curtains to Lake Jennings to, to make sure that we're managing that mixing and that retention in the reservoir uh, effectively to meet those, those regulations. Um, as a side note, Lake Jennings is currently already a managed reservoir. We already have an aeration system in that reservoir. Um, the natural cycle of any uh, open raw water reservoir is to have kind of a turnover cycle. Um, we don't allow that to happen. That, that allows us to maintain a higher level of water quality in the reservoir so that Lake Jennings is always available uh, for, for the district and our customers um, as use. Um, of course, we'll be looking at re reliability and redundancy items in terms of emergency power, um, as well as a, a new flow meter for administrative and tracking of water purposes. So I did mention project funding, um, and a project of this size is big. It's estimated somewhere, you know, in the mid $600 million range. Um, but the JPA and Padre Dam has just done a phenomenal job in, in going out and, and working through the funding aspects of how to do this. So on the right-hand side, in the orange, we're really looking at those grants and incentives. So these are this is dollars that don't need to be paid back. These are dollars that we were eligible for, um, were applied for, and a lot of work went into to make sure that we secured. Um, some of the proposition money, these are through water bonds in the state um, that were approved by the public for water projects. Uh, this project qualifies for these bonds. Um, Title 16, that's through the Bureau of Reclamation. Um, that's funded through the, the State Water Resource Control Board. Uh, the Metropolitan Water District, they have a local resources project grants and incentives. And then these are incentive programs. They understand that that imported supply, anything we can do to, to offload from that, there should be value associated with that. So um, these dollars are based off the assumed production of our project and the, and the rebates we'll receive from the Metropolitan Water District. Um, at the bottom, the 1.7 and currently in progress looking for a, an additional $17 million in grants. That's from the Water Infrastructure uh, and Investment in the Nation Act. And then on the left-hand side um, in the blue, um, these are very low interest, very beneficial uh, loans uh, for the project. So through WIFIA, this is administered through the Environmental Protection Agency. It's the Water Infrastructure Finance uh, and Innovation Act. 
Uh, $388 million, um, and this is very low. This is in the 2% or less um, rate of return. Um, very advantageous to our customers and to the project as a whole. Uh, it's through the state resolving, revolving fund for the state. Um, $101 million has already been secured. Uh, another $135 million is in progress uh, and expected to be approved. Um, and we really feel that through the grants and the low interest loans that we'll be able to meet the target cost of the project. Um, but if not, uh, again, Padre Dam and the JPA are, are being proactive. Um, and they're ready to do private bonds in the municipal market if required. So public outreach. So Padre Dam and the JPA have been engaged in public outreach since the beginning of the project. Uh, the project itself started off looking a little different. It wasn't always as large as it was. Um, it took time to read through and, and develop and understand what's the most beneficial project for the region. Um, so Padre has been developing and, and going out and doing outreach um, for quite some time. Um, they've had lots of groundbreaking events. They've done lots of tours through the demonstration facility when it was online. Um, they've had newsletters. They've got websites. Um, we've had interesting things like brewery partnership, partnerships. We've had the, you know, the city of San Diego or in the county, um, one of the largest microbrewery areas in the country. Um, and they did do uh, cooperation and collaborative work with one of the local breweries to develop um, to beer using um, this advanced purified water. Um, and there's widespread support. So through elected officials, uh, local municipalities, the tribal governments in the region, uh, and then other state and local agencies, um, widespread support, understanding the importance and the role this project will play in the region uh, and the long-term benefits uh, as well. Um, widespread support uh, and looking forward to having the project move forward and come online. The, the JPA itself um, does have uh, an online uh, website as well as the ability for, they develop what's called the Clear Solution Newsletter. Um, the um, uh, website address is located here on the left. Um, Helix itself also on our website, uh, we do have a, an AWP page, an advanced water purification page. There's information on there. You can sign up um, for both sites um, to get updates and things that are happening. Um, you can sign up for the newsletter. They have additional videos and information about reuse, about the project as a whole. A um, lot of good information, a lot of good um, ability to understand how the project works, and then updates as we move forward in the project and how that will work. And there'll be additional updates and outreach meetings as well as we move forward. Um, this is the first, I think, in Helix is kind of beginning of our outreach. Uh, we expect to have many more um, not just for Helix customers, but more than likely we'll have collaborative meetings um, with all the agencies that are involved with the project itself. Um, so with that, I just want to thank, that's my time. I'm going to turn it back over to Mike and Michelle, and we'll jump into the um, question and answer selection of this. And I believe I will stop sharing, Mike. That's what we want to do for that. Okay. Thank you, Brian. Yeah. And excellent presentation. I learned something new each time, uh, each time I hear you present. So thank you. So we're going to start our Q&A with uh, any questions we received in the chat. And I think we may have a couple. Michelle, do you want to take us through that? We did. Uh, the first question we received was around storm, storm runoff. And the question is, does any of this treated water begin as storm runoff? So I'm, I can jump in for that. And so um, right now, other than... Um, water, what we would be considered collected into the wastewater system during what we call wait or wet water periods or um, wet water, <laughs> wish I could talk, say that three times fast, wet weather periods, um, it is not storm water. So storm water collection systems are a separate infrastructure uh, in themselves. Um, and we're currently not uh, actively seeking the, the storm water aspect. This is really just reusing the existing water and wastewater infrastructure. Thanks, Brian. And we got a second question around cost. Is advanced treatment more cost effective than desalination? Uh, in the a short answer is yes. And so uh, one of the reasons being is that really we talked about the use of the reverse osmosis. And so reverse osmosis on a desalination scale requires uh, much more energy because you have to pump it at a much higher pressure. So typically you, you know, you're in potentially 900,000 PSI type pressure on a desalination. Um, for advanced treatment here using wastewater, we're at a much lower pressure. And so we don't have to use as much energy to pump that through the membranes. Um, and as a side note, um, the advanced project that we're looking at, it's also less energy intensive than what it takes to import the supplies from the Colorado River and 
the state water project as a whole. So collectively using and recycling this water within the region, not only you know, supports the continued use of that finite resource of water, um, from a climate aspect of things, it's generating less carbon footprint uh, and it's utilizing less energy. Thanks, Brian. Uh, Mike, that's the two questions we received in chat, so I'll turn it okay. back over to you. All right, thank you. Uh, Don or Carl, do you have any additional questions you'd like us to answer? I don't mean to put you on the spot, but but please ask <laughs> if you have a question. No, I do not. Thank you for asking. Okay. No, I don't have anything either. Thanks. All right. Uh, well, listen, if either of you have a question that comes up when you're thinking about this later or tomorrow, uh, please don't hesitate to email your question to us. And if you email it to publicaffairs at helixwater.org, we will be sure to answer it for you. And it looks like that's pretty much what we have for tonight. So uh, thank you for joining us. And please know that we like to have these water chats every few months. And the best way not to miss the next one is to keep an eye on the newsletter that comes with your water bill or to check out our blog on hwd.com. And uh, we, we always announce, uh, do multiple announcements for when we have these because they're really a good way to ask us directly uh, what your questions, uh, for the answers to your questions. So thank you all. And from all of us at Helix, thank you and have a good night.